Southern stories have always appealed to me uh, growing up in, in Texas and Arkansas and living most of my life in, in those states and Louisiana and Georgia and North Carolina. Um, very exposed to Southern characters, Southern literature, and um, Southern landscape. So it's always a part of my life, and uh, every now and then I want to—I want nothing more than to escape. Um, but I'm always going to consider it home, and so it's uh, always a, a, a great place to return and, and tell stories about others and tell my own. There was a real affinity you had with the writer as well, like the novelist. Right. Um, the movie Joe is based on a novel called Joe by uh, the author Larry Brown. Um, who I was lucky enough to know a little, uh, a little bit when he was alive. I worked on a, a documentary, I was, I was a production assistant on a, on a documentary about his life called The Rough South of Larry Brown that was directed by Gary Hawkins, who then adapted the screenplay for us. Um, and being exposed to Larry and just having those afternoons of sitting in the sun, um, you know, hearing his stories and telling him a few of mine uh, was very inspiring. So the opportunity to make this film including um, the writer Gary Hawkins uh, and to be able to uh, work with such a fine cast and bring that story to life that's been with me for a long time as a, as a novel and as a screenplay and as an enthusiast of Larry's work it was just an honor. Hello, I'll introduce myself. Uh, my name is Joe. Uh, for me it was just about playing the part. Um, the movie's about whatever you want it to be about. It, it's about a social crisis, and that's perfectly a good thing to have it be about. But for me, it was just about trying to make the character come to life. I read the book by Larry Brown, and there's a lot of great moments in the book that helped me find the character and try to fit within David's vision, which uh, I think we had a great collaboration. Also, I was blessed with a magnificent cast with Ty and Ronnie, so I was in really good hands. I'm assuming that you want me to answer that question. <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't know what it is about me that might make you believe I'm the spokesperson for American uh, usage of uh, firearms. I'm not. Um, I, I really can't answer that. I don't have an answer for you on that. You, you, you'd have to look somewhere else. Hello? Um, I think everyone was just so passionate about the film. Everyone that worked on it, all the cast members, uh, Ryan, Nick, um, Ozzy, uh, Gary Poulter. Yeah, everyone was just so passionate about it, and you know, it, was, uh, it was a lot of fun, and you know, it was good to be a part of the cast. Uh, yeah, I think uh, I think in, I think in terms of working with these people, a lot uh, most of these people were indigenous to uh, to the area and to the region in Texas. So I think if anything, it was a a, a call for uh, me personally to be more in my toes because they were so uh, you know. So uh, such a uh, you know a representation of, of the region you know so uh, and and their and, and their authenticity and and uh, so I don't think I think it was it was it was difficult for anyone it, it was probably more so on our end or my end at least. As much as it's an honor to work with an actor as, as acclaimed and prestigious and brilliant as Nicolas Cage and, and as fresh and exciting and inviting and adventuresome as, as Ty and Ronnie. It's also an amazing experience for a director to have the opportunity to work with a performer like Gary Poulter. Uh, we called him Ozzy on the set. Uh, he was a man discovered by our casting directors uh, living on the streets of Austin, Texas, where we shot the film, and um, was just a larger than life character. Uh, he'd be a performer on the street one day and, and talk about his, uh, his past engineering degrees and intellectual uh, accolades. Uh, and, and the dark path that he'd taken in life and the joys that he hoped for in the future. Uh, and an amazing sense of humor, an amazing sense of charisma within this uh, man who lived a very hard life. And when we invited him to participate, to participate in the movie, um, it was because there was something within him that I, I, I really believed and needed to be expressed. There was uh, a, 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 a beautiful performance waiting to escape this man. And, um, and it was very clear in our initial auditions 
he came in to his first audition to read for a little bit part, have a couple of lines, and then I said, no, how about read for this other part? Have us spend a day with us and uh, read for a little bit bigger part. And he came in and read for that, and it was just incredible and very natural and utterly real. Um, and then I said, why don't you come in and lead for, read for the third lead in the film? And uh, he came in and he, and he knocked my socks off and uh, he committed to the role and, and um, you know, he helped us in, in ways that I can't even describe really find an authenticity and an honesty to this story of um, there's in many ways very brutal, very tragic, upsetting and violent and somehow he found a way to thread the, the genuine humanity that he had into a, a very villainous character. Um, he passed away shortly after, after the production, um, which was uh, a, a, a great loss because, you know, as we talked about on the set, he was going to be the next great saloon keeper in a western or Civil War general in a movie, uh, in an epic, you know, masterpiece to come. And uh, this was his story, and, and we got to, uh, got to play with him in his final days, and it was an amazing experience. But have you ever thought about that? And uh, at what point, uh, for your point of view, of a successful career, uh, an actor starts thinking about retiring? From my point of view, it's like a devotion, passion. So I'm wondering why. Thank you. Well, I can't really speak for those two other gentlemen. Uh, however, I, I don't. <laughs> I don't see myself retiring anytime soon. I may, I may take more time off between movies, but I, I do s still believe that um, <laughs> film performance is, is, is you know, part of me and it's something I'm going to want to explore for the rest of my life. Uh, now, that's not to say I, I don't have fantasies of uh, living a life of contemplation and uh, sitting in the sun, but I, I can't just uh, sit by the swimming pool with a Mai Tai. I, I need to work. <laughs> you know, it's, it's not uh, a surprise to me that he doesn't stop working, that he's prolific, because there is an inner music to David that I think needs to be expressed. And the way that manifests itself on set is this, this liberation of expression where you don't just do the script as written, you, yes, you do it as written, and then you improvise, and then you try it a different way. And sometimes it's not even just for the words. You can say different kinds of words, but it's also about just as something as, as minute and specific as a look in your eye. I mean, he's really, he's really going for a micro, and a macro approach to, to the process in terms of performance. And I just thought it was, uh, it was exhilarating.